In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hidden my face While the storm howls above me And there is no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe till the storm passes by Oh, till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast and let me stand in the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe until the storm passes by Many times Satan whispered there is no need to try for there's no end of sorrow and there is no hope by and by oh but I know that thou art with me and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand Till the storm passes by Keep me safe Until the storm passes by Ephesians chapter number 6 tonight Verse number 16 Ephesians six sixteen. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. I want to talk about overcoming fear tonight. What I mean by that is fear of a lot of different things. And I want to say this, the only way that we can ever understand faith is Really by actions. A lot of people say they have faith. But if your actions don't line up to what your faith is. Then what you have is a mindset of something. But it's not faith. Uh, if I was going to put it in some kind of illustration. You're not going to get into an airplane. Unless you believe and have faith. That that airplane is going to fly. You could say you believe it's going to fly. But when you've got to make a decision to get on there. And then by faith it actually requires a demand, some kind of action. It's not just a belief. There's something that's done. It's responded to. Everybody says, well, I got faith that God can restore my joy, but yet they don't get up and do the things they know to do. Well, you don't have faith. You want God to give you a handout. That's different. I got faith that God will restore my marriage, but yet you're not responding to what you should do to to restore your marriage. That's not faith. That's you're sitting back wanting God just to fix something. That's not the way it works. We're going to live by faith. It's, it's, it's really important that we understand that that's the way that you get the heart of God. 
According to the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So faith is not something that is passive. It's not something that seems to be irrelevant. It is really the heartbeat. It's something that matters a lot more than we understand. But just because you say you have faith does not mean you have faith. Your faith is going to be seen in the way that you respond, the way that you act. And I find out a lot of times that when we're dealing with spiritual warfare, there's a lot of us that are saved, Christians, that we know we're saved, truly saved, been born again. Our problem is not unbelief. Our problem is fear. A lot of us believe that God can, but we have a fear that God won't. That's where a lot of the problem comes in. So when you get to this text, you begin to see what he says. He, he says that it's the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So faith is not just something that is a biblical or theological term. I want to kind of say that to you. It's not this big word or maybe a, a little word that has a deep definition. That's, that's not what it is. Faith is an everyday occurrence. It is a practice that you have every single day of your life. It's not a, 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 a wording that we find in just the Word of God. It's something that you and I live by. It's relevant. It's real. It's a priority. It's must. And you cannot live by faith but yet have fear. It's impossible. To be able to say, I have faith to be able to walk and follow the Lord, but at the same time, you got fear of what's going to happen. Therefore, you don't make this step, but the truth be told, you still proclaim the promises and steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, but yet you don't make that step because of fear. You, you can't be on one side of the fence and the other side of the fence. Either you trust God, you got faith in God, or you don't. It's just that simple. So, what is the shield of faith? It's the fourth piece that we're talking about. We've already talked about how to. Be able to overcome weaknesses and knowing that you do that by, by, by having strength. Well, how do you have strength? Well, there's a lot of ways to have strength. We've talked about those. We've talked about how to overcome evil with good. We've talked about how to overcome faults with truth. And, of course, we talked about overcoming anxiety and having faith and be able to go forward and be able to trust the Lord and, and know that everything's all right to be able to trust. So tonight we want to talk about Having faith and overcoming fear. So what is it? Shield of faith. It's four foot tall, two and a half foot wide. It's like a leather base that's wrapped around it. So if it was going to be possibly about this wide, and I'd say, I don't know, maybe about this tall. And it was a, a shield that they had, they had held, that they had brought up to wherever there was protection because the the, the, the arrows, the, the darts that would be a shot, there was two different things that were done. A lot of times whenever I read it, I just recently learned that it wasn't just something they would dip in fire and they would shoot across, but the enemy himself would sometimes would dip the point of it actually in poison. And what would happen is when it would come across, if it just barely even cut you, it would kill them, though it did not penetrate them, but because it caused any kind of damage. Now, I say that because it's relevant for the fact to be able to understand that's exactly the way the devil works. Understand there's all kinds of different ways that even if he cannot get you straight away, he will get you in a passive way and he will come at you at every angle that he can. So it might by, be by things of temptation, of ungodliness. It, it might be a, a problem that you're dealing with. It might be a, a personal situation. It might be a physical situation. The devil has many, many, many darts, many, many different arrows, if you will, that he can come at you. Now, you know I don't need to be able to chase a rabbit trail for you to identify with that. He could get to you through your children. He could get that to uh, get to you through your job. He could do it through a school. He could do it through your family. He could do it through your spouse. He could even do it within your own mind. There's many avenues that the devil will use. Now, that's crucial because you've got to understand that the shield of faith is for your protection. So what does that mean? That means faith is for your protection. And if you do not settle your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then the devil will get you to believe whatever it is that the devil wants you to believe to the place where you're ready to throw in the towel, ready to quit, ready to say it's not worth it anymore because you no longer live by faith, you live by fear. you got to make your mind up. I will live by the faith of the Son of God. That's your mind. You, you have to settle that down in 
your heart. So what is faith? I'll tell you what faith is not. According to the book of James, chapter 2, verse number 19, it's not believing. Even the demons, the devil himself, even they believe. So get that mindset out of your mind. Well, I got faith, I believe. No, listen to me. Faith is more than just believing. It's responding. It's acting on that belief that you have. You know, the scripture is quoted many a times. And it's found over in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. The Bible says this, 11.1. 1, it says, now faith, listen, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So in other words, it's something that's there, but yet you don't know it. You believe it's there. I can't forget the man that was one time. I read a book, and it was talking about faith. And I remember the writer, he talked about, uh, there was a quote that was in it, but he was talking about how faith is like stair steps where you can't see the top of it. In other words, you don't know where it's going to go. You just make step after step just assuming it's going to get to the place you're trying to go. And that's what faith a lot of times is like. You make that first step, you don't know where God's going to lead you. When you step out by faith, you don't know where God's going to lead you. When God had, had, had saved me, I didn't know what God was going to do in my life. When God called me to preach, I, I didn't know what door God would open. I didn't know where he would send me. I didn't know how he'd use me uh, when God gave me a wife and I knew that she was the one for me by faith I had to accept she's the one for me I didn't know the rocky roads or the rough roads that we would travel or the smooth roads I had no idea but this is what I know is that by faith that God gave her to me so I got to make that step that next step that next step that next step off of faith and that is what faith is it's all about, it is responding, it is acting on something, even though you believe it, that God is going to take you to where God wants to take you. you got to trust God at that. Now, to be able to say you live by faith and you don't respond that way, you probably don't live by faith. So, what, what does it mean, literally, to be able to uh, have a journey of faith? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall, he will direct thy path. Now, the hardest thing about that is this, lean not to thy own understanding. That's the hardest thing about the journey. The hardest thing about the journey of faith is leaning not to thy own understanding. There's some of us that are so saved and so good at being saved that when God does what he wants to do, we get mad because we don't think that's the way it should be. So that rough road, that rocky patch, that mountaintop, or that valley we go in, we're so good, so saved, we're frustrated thinking, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Really? Because God's the one that's, that's in control. And according to the scriptures, when the Bible says that he dealt with Luke, uh, when he dealt with Simon Peter, he said that uh, Satan had desired to sift you as wheat. Why? Because why? Your faith will be strengthened. Your faith will be strengthened. Now see, that seems to be, I don't even know if it's even understanding to me. I don't even know if it makes sense to me to know that God is telling me that he's got to let the devil get a hold of me to strengthen my faith. But that's exactly what God had to do to make people. Peter, the man that Peter was, sometimes for God to bring forth in your life what God has to bring forth, it's going to go through some things that don't make sense to you. So you have to make up your mind in the journey not to lead to thy own understanding. Are you understanding me tonight? You have to trust God. And when God says turn, you turn. When God says detour, you detour. When God says stop, you stop. When God says go, you go. But whatever God says, you better hope that you can hear His voice. And you discern His voice. Most of all, you listen to His voice. Trust in the Lord. That trust is, is a word that's hard for me too because if you want to be quite honest tonight, to me, it's a lot easier to live by sight than it is to live by faith. When you're telling me to trust something I don't see, it's not easy. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. It makes more sense 
to respond upon what you see because it makes sense to you. And then it does something that God just puts in your mind. So then that's when we battle the mind. That's where we fast. That's when we pray. That's when we get along. Because we know, God, I don't need my opinion about this. I don't need my wants about this. I don't need my ideas about this. God, I need to know what you want for me. So we have to make up our mind. I'm not going to be manipulated by what I see. Because sometimes what you see can be deceiving to you. And that's why a lot of times we live in fear. Because of what we see. And sometimes what we see ain't even true. It's the way we connect the dots. We're like, well, if this happens, that's going to happen. It's like we can make the outline. And just because we can connect the dots, by the way, that hasn't even happened yet. You hear what I'm trying to say? I mean, it, it, we, just because we know or we've been there or we've got experience... Just because you know you've been there and you had experience and it happened last time don't mean it's going to happen the same time. That's not, that's, not, that's not the way God works. God always has a plan for everything. You know what I've learned? I've learned in my own life that if what I'm about to do usually makes sense and it's logical, it's probably not God's voice that I'm listening to. If it makes sense and it's comfortable, it's probably not God's voice that I'm listening to. <laughs> no, God, you don't want me to go apologize to them because you know that not, that's not, no, no, God says I'm okay right here. <laughs> now, that's not God's voice. God's saying go apologize to somebody. But it just makes sense. You know, that could cause division in the church. That's not of God. God's not the author of you. I mean, we'll quote Bible to go against what God's going to say to us. I mean, that's exactly how we do it. We'll, we'll literally, we'll throw it out there and we'll say, no, there's no way God to do it because he's not the author of confusion. So I'm going to sit over here and just make sense to stay right here. That's not the way God works. Listen, having a church plant <laughs> is anything but what you had ever asked me last year what I would have thought God would have used to be the greatest thing in my heart, in my opinion, as I pastored and been part of Haynes Baptist Church, this is the number one excitement that's been in me because it's all God. Now, you could be completely different, and that's fine and dandy, but I'm telling you, on, on a spiritual level, I'm at an all-time high and have been. Even at days that I am low, when I don't know what the next step is, I am so excited to see what God is doing, not just in me, not just in Haynes, not just in this community, not just in our missions program that's all across the country, all across this world, but also in Dayton Baptist Church, also in his family, also in that local church, also in all those local church. I mean, do you understand? what God has done by one step of obedience that we have taken. God has really done some big things in our church. But here's the deal. It did not make sense. You say, well, I ain't seen that. Well, that's because you ain't got on board. Amen. You haven't got on board. And if you would get on board, you would be able to experience what God's trying to do. So let's keep going further. So I say this. Faith is amazing. It's something amazing to be able to have. How amazing is it well, faith was the very thing to be able to took them from going to Egypt, actually be able to get into the promised land. Somebody say amen. Faith was the very thing to be able to let them to be able to go all the way across the Red Sea and took them to dry land when you look in the scripture. I mean, I'm talking about that was faith. Faith is what it took to be able to get one little boy who seemed to be a shepherd boy that knew absolutely nothing about fighting. That was really a, 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 an uncommon uh, fighter, if you want to say it that way. Not even, not even lined up or measured up to be what he was. It was by faith God used him to defeat not only his giant, but a giant to a lot of people. Can I get an amen right there? It was faith that was so amazing that took five loaves and two fishes and fed over 5,000 people. See, that's faith. Faith is an amazing thing. Faith can do things that you and I could never even imagine. That's how great faith is. But still, we live by fear. We live by fear. Matter of fact, Paul even had asked them, uh, in, I think in the uh, church of Corinth, he had, he'd asked them to be able to live by faith. He commended them in Thessalonica about their faith because they did live by faith. And I don't want to go down those roads, but I want to say this. Faith is so amazing that there's two, two types, two times, if you will, that Jesus spoke about faith that it amazed him. The Bible says in 
Mark 6, 6. You don't have to turn there, but if you want to, you can. That Jesus is now where he's from. And the people that even knew about Jesus would not even respond to what Jesus said. And the Bible says that he marveled, he was amazed, not at their faith, but their unbelief. Then Jesus goes in Luke chapter number 7, verse 1 through 7. There's a centurion. There was a death that was there. There was something that was going on. And literally everybody else didn't know what to do. He sent for Jesus. He said, if you could just speak the word. And the Bible says that the Lord literally was amazed, marveled at his faith. Now get this. Here's what's so ironic. The people being us. That should have had faith, didn't have faith. And the people that by the world's view shouldn't have had faith, they had faith. You ever, you ever sometimes look back and say, how in the world can God do somebody for do something for somebody like that when maybe they just recently got in church or I don't know, just recently got saved, and you're like, how in the world can God, but why would God bless them like that? Well, maybe because some of us has got to be such a stickler that we don't trust God like we used to. Let me ask you a question. And know this ain't crossed my mind and God ain't put it in my heart. So please don't scare. Mr. Southern, don't leave when I say this, all right? If God told us right now to build another church, would you have to? <laughs> Thank you. I told you, don't run, Mr. Southern. Amen. Would you have, excuse me for saying this way, would you have crazy faith like you did when God said, come here? By the way, when we were building on a rock that wasn't even buildable, we had to blast the rock out. And we, and I, I, I guess I could say, we were just a bunch of dumb rednecks. Blast that rock out of there, praise God. God said there's going to be a church over there. We're going to have a church. Right? Look at what God's done. So here's the question at hand. If God don't change, are we still going to be usable? Are we still going to have faith? When we plant this church and it's established and we take off the financial burden, if we want to use that term, are we going to have enough faith to plant another church? Send another preacher out from Haynes Baptist Church to plant another church? And then plant another church. Are we going to have enough faith to be able to bring on the staff here to be able to work and deal with all of our programs, our youth and our seniors and all these things that have been shaken? Are we going to have that kind of faith? Because it's not about us. It's about the Lord. And what I'm trying to tell you is we can't live by fear. Here's where we're fear. So now we're we're going to make it plain real quick. Y'all stay with me. I've got four principles that we're going to be done tonight. Here's where fear comes in. Fear is you had a bad experience from the last church, so you're not where you used to be. Fear is you had a bad experience with the last last pastor, so you're not going to trust like you used to trust. Fear is you had a bad experience with the last church body, so you're not going to trust like you used to trust. Fear is you had a bad experience the last time that you got vulnerable, and you begin to serve the Lord. And what happens? You got your eyes off of why you started serving the Lord. And all of a sudden you got burnt by the people you were trying to serve. You were, you were empty yourself, pouring in. They never appreciated you. So therefore, you quit living by faith. Fear is last time you, you, you acted or you responded or you served in that capacity of the church when you sang in the choir, worked in the Sunday school, or done something to visitation, that it, that, it, that it done something, then it just bombed. So now by fear, you don't trust and live by faith like you used to. Fear is you had a daddy or a mom that treated you a certain way, and that's why your marriage is not what it needs to be because you still have a fear of the last person you trusted. Do you understand how fear is crippling all of us? Fear is the way that we run so hard yesterday 
and you see how it affects and damages your family, when the truth be told, it wasn't God's fault. It was God letting us handle it ourselves. We fell on our face, but that's how God used that to strengthen our faith. Just because we fell last time don't mean I'm going to stumble the next time. You understand what I'm trying to say? We get so scared because of the scars. I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I live where you live. I don't know if you understand that. I live where you live. And we have to make up our mind. I'm not, I'm not going to be dictated by this. I know it hurt. I know it's scary. I know I'm vulnerable. But I'll tell you what, God got me here. If God got me here, I'm going to keep on going. Why? Because God deserves my very best. Let me give you four things and I'm done tonight. Number one, very simple. Number one. To have your faith grow, we need more preaching. What do you mean by that? The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My wife, we've been talking a lot lately about some different things. and Of course, different mentors and people in my life, they tell me just keep preaching. You want to know why? Because that's the one thing, the one avenue that God will use consistently. It's preaching. And I'm not just talking about preaching from the pulpit. Some of us need to get in our Bible and let the Word of God minister to us to where our faith can be increased. Listen, to where we see what God says, and then we go out and live it, and then we see God take His Word and apply it to our life, and God do something that we never thought could happen. And say, wait a minute, I know that's God because I just read it in His Word. Come on now, y'all help me. I mean, that's praise the Lord. Or, or, or listen to the Word of God and not just listen to it, but apply it to your life. We need more, pre- we need to hear more, absorb more of the Word of God. That's what we need. That's what it's talking about. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We need to be able to respond to these things and allow our faith to be able to grow. Number two, we need more problems. It's not an easy one, is it? One of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. It's found in 1 Peter chapter number 5. Verse number 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us to his eternal glory by Jesus, by Christ Jesus, listen, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Listen, I need settled faith. Listen to me. I need strengthened faith. Listen to me. I need established faith. But verse number, six, verse number 10 says, after ye have suffered a while. Are you hearing me tonight? If we want our faith to grow, we're going to need some more problems in our life. Let me get somebody at the piano. I'm done. Two more things. We need people. What do you mean by people, Brother Jason? Well, you know as well as I do that those, those shields were shields for an individual. However, I know y'all are not movie watchers, but can I, can I, I just want to be real for a minute. I love the movie Gladiator, I'm not promoting it. I've never seen it, but Shane Hatcher told me it's a good movie, okay? (laughs) But listen, in that movie, there's a scene where they have shields. And what they do is they come together and those shields interlock. And back in the days when they used to do it, them soldiers, them shields would interlock. And what it done is it created a greater shield for all of them to be able to gather behind. See, God didn't put us in each other's life to get mad at each other, to judge each other and be critical. And God put, the Bible says in Mark chapter number 2, you study scripture, they went up and they tore off the roof. In verse number 5, I believe it it might be verse number 6. The Bible says that when Jesus saw their faith. 
You want your faith to increase? Learn, learn to fellowship. Learn, learn to get people that's going to pray with you and pray for you. You can start playing when you're ready. My last thing and I'm done. We need problems. We need preaching. We need people. And my last point would be this. We need purpose. The Bible says in Psalms 139, 14, for you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what, you know what gives me faith? <laughs> Is to know that God created me with purpose. With intentions. Now I might feel like I'm in the wilderness sometimes, a lot of the time, trying to figure out where to go, where to come. I mean, I listen, I'm a basket case right here sometimes, all right? A lot of times I really am. But I know what the Bible says. And you know, sometimes people get tired of preaching and they know all the verses and it's been quoted. And we just, man, just because we know it, we take it and we throw it out the window like it ain't even got no power no more. But that verse applies to all of us. Everybody in here was fearfully and wonderfully made. That means God himself had and has a purpose for your life. Here's the question. Are you fulfilling it? And if you're not fulfilling it by faith, listen to me. This, this is our invitation. Are you living by fear so therefore you've lost purpose because you're living by fear? Y'all help me. We got a lot of wounded soldiers. We got a lot of wounded Christians. A lot of good, wounded people. Good people. That all they could do is talk about what used to be. Or maybe you hear these words, I wish I could again. I'm trying to get back to that place. Have you ever, I mean, have you ever heard or have you ever said this? I mean, friend, I have. And you want to know why? Because we're living by fear when we know that God has got a purpose. God knows what he's doing. Don't you think that when Jesus had told Simon Peter and he was out there denying the Lord, don't you think God knew that? Because he said, Satan had desired to sift you as wheat. Listen, look up here. He said, when thou art converted. There's two things that you see. Number one, he knew he was going to go astray. Number two, he knew he would come back. Whoa. He, he knew he would. And friend, listen, I'm as hard on myself as anybody else. But there's going to come a time in your life, your family, your husband, your wife, your children, sinners that's out there to need a light or even your mother, your brethren that's in the church you got to make up your mind that God knew what he was doing when he created me he saved me he knew my faults he knew my failures he knew my weaknesses he knew how inadequate I was he knew everything about me and yet he still has a plan for my life and I want to tell you something. Don't ever get settled being settled for what you think you deserve instead of what God created you for. You hear me? Don't ever be settled for settling for what you think you deserve and not what God created you for. God has a purpose. Say, Lord, I'm not living by fear no more. I'm going to live by faith. And I'm going to do what you want me to do. And if you don't want me to do it, you're a big enough God to stop me. But I'm tired of letting everything else dictate and manipulate me. God, I'm yours. All I have is because of you. My wife, my children, my money, my job, my husband ministry, whatever it is that's in your heart, all I have is yours. You gave it to me. Lord, whatever you want to do in my life, I'm going to trust you. Let God help you tonight. Our Father, I love you, and I sure do thank you for your word. Give us the faith we need. Help us, Lord. 
rekindle that faith where we respond not to fear but to who you are I love you and I thank you for your word in Jesus name Amen as the pastor I want to thank you for viewing our video today however if God's dealt with your heart we do not want to end this video without giving you a chance to be able to accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior if you're there today and God's actually dealing with your heart I want to remind you what the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that means every single one of us has had problems, issues, sin, failures, faults in our past. But the great thing is this, is that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming through the Father but by me. There is a way to be able to have hope, to have eternal security within the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to know that you're saved by the grace of God. Now the great thing about the Bible is it tells us about the love of God. He says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's amazing to a lot of people, and they can quote it. But the beauty of it is this, is the very next verse tells us the purpose of Christ. Because the Bible says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That means that God sent His Son to die for those of us who are sinners so that we can have fellowship with God Himself. Now, if you're there today and God's really been dealing with your heart, I want to ask you this question. Do you really believe that God's been dealing with you about salvation? If that's the case today, then I want to tell you what you need to do is repent of your sins. You need to die to yourself. Admit that you are lost and you're on your way to hell. And then look at what the Bible tells us, that He tells us that we can be saved through Christ. Who do you call on? There's only one. As the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, would you trust in Christ? I want to ask you would, you, would you trust in Him as a personal Savior? You say, Brother Jason, I don't really know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, the Bible also tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, God sent His Son to die for everyone. If you've made this decision today to be able to trust in Christ, to be able to die to yourself, to, to be able to start living for Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior after repenting, would you do us a favor and be able to contact us at 336-788-0551 and let us know about this decision that you made so we can start praying for you. Thank you so much.